Welcome, well you are at home with Jim and Joy and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home and we would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And today our guest is Bill Donahue. He is the Senior Lecturer and Content Specialist for Theology of the Body Institute. You can go to their great website tobinstitute.org, tobinstitute.org. And you know, you were, um, when you're a revert, yes. I'm a convert, yes. and so today is the feast day of St. John Paul II, mm -hmm. and we're excited, but when you were, um, you kept saying on your journey, I was a lapsed Catholic. You were a lapsed an Catholic. Episcopal priest. That yes. you really wanted to come in under this Pope. Yeah. Joy, I really want to come in under this Pope. So we went to Rome. Yes. And, and we got to see the Pope. Three times. Three not, times. Not personally, but close no, up. Right. Yeah. It was unbelievable. But, but we were Protestant when we went, yeah. right? And we were there and we were like, oh my gosh, there's the Pope. And yeah. we were in audiences with him. And yes. it was and just I started magnificent. The chant because he came up to, to lay a wreath at this. Uh, the Spanish Steps yes. area, mm -hmm. where there was a rabbi priest that had a revelation. I think I saw the Blessed Virgin and converted and so on. And it was very, very quiet. And he just came out of the Pope Mobile and was there. And nobody was saying anything. I said, Viva el Papa, like that. <laughs> and everybody started to chant. It was beautiful. And so I, I thought he opened his mouth and said, that's Jim Pinto. I, like, I don't think that really happened. <laughs> but it was, it was just great. And yeah, I mean, he so influenced our lives. Yes. Um, his teaching, and as I was serving, as I said, as an Episcopal priest, a lapsed Catholic, didn't know when I left, uh, but was doing a lot of racial reconciliation work in the mm -hmm. city of Fairfield, just outside of Birmingham, very involved in the pro-life movement, mm -hmm. the both of us, and the rescue movement, and would sit in at abortion mills, and and was arrested a number of times to nonviolently and prayerfully sit in between the abortionist and the woman going in and so on and just and preaching the gospel, you know, not, I wouldn't call it the gospel of life at that point. But what I did was I started reading again, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. I read uh, Evangelium Vitae, Theology of the Body and all that. And I'm saying, you know what? This is what I'm trying to share. Yes. I'm trying to share this. And this is what I left. And here's this this Pope, mm -hmm. he's sharing all this. And I felt like infinitesimally small in terms of what I was sharing. I said, this guy is like he's unbelievable. Rich. And I'm maxed out on sharing mm -hmm. about pro-life. I don't have any more ideas or whatever, because this comes out of the rich heritage of the mm -hmm. church that you can preach the gospel of life with dauntless fidelity. And he really did that. And I said, my gosh, I don't understand, you know, my ministry and having to leave it, but I need to bring my gifts back home to the church. I need to stop stealing the Catholic Church's stuff yes. and need to come home and I need to submit my life. And John Paul II was instrumental in doing that for me. And how I wish I knew what he was sharing as I was a person before I left the mm -hmm. church. Anyway, uh, Bill Donahue is back with us today. I think he met the Pope personally. Yes. We we're going to ask him about that. And so it's a great day to lift up a wonderful saint like that and to ask his intercessions as his life and as his teaching continues to blossom to this generation and those to come. Yes. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest again is Bill Donahue. He is the Senior Lecturer and Content Specialist of Theology of the Body Institute. You can go to the website, tobinstitute.org. Absolutely wonderful. And today is the feast day of St. John Paul II. And mm -hmm. Bill, we want you to share with our family, we know his great influence on your life, but you personally got to meet that Pope, didn't you? I did. This is an awesome day. I'm just flying high. It was literally 20 years today that I met him face to face. So it was October 22nd, which was a World Mission Sunday in the year 2000. It fell on a Sunday. So I was in Rome, part of a World Mission Congress for the Jubilee year of 2000. And we were there for uh, three or four days in Rome having our meetings and I was doing mission education. 
And uh, World Mission Sunday Mass was coming up, and an Italian monsignor came up to me and, and tapped me on the shoulder and said, you will meet the Holy Father tomorrow. Wow. And I, I was able to, <laughs> with 11 other of the mission educators from around the world, we're all from different countries, be just 30 feet from John Paul the Great during the entire World Mission Sunday Mass. And we each walked up, knelt down in front of him, and received a mission cross mm. from John Paul the Great, and he blessed us. And I have that cross right here in my office on the wall. Um, unbelievable. I'm literally like that close to the Pope. And, uh, I, you know, the only response I had was absolute silence, <laughs> love, and awe. Uh, and he said, bring Jesus back to your country. Mm. And I, I mean, you know, I turned around and just staggered out 80,000 people in St. Peter's Square. Yes. Um, and so, again, 20 years to this day, uh, I was already aware of Theology of the Body. I had still a couple of years before the Institute was formed, and I was called by the Institute to speak. So now traveling around the world, traveling around our country, bringing John Paul's message, um, I just, this is like the ultimate B12 shot. I'm just so pumped today. It's well, you awesome. Are, you are doing that. Theology of the Body Institute is doing that. And, and it's an amazing word that he spoke. You know, some people might get a little insulted by it and say, what do you mean bring mm. Jesus back? We have Jesus. We're a Christian nation. We're a Judeo-Christian right. heritage. Some of that's, you know, true to a degree. But that's the new evangelization, isn't it? That's what he was saying, that there's an yes. evangelization for those that may not know the Lord, never been baptized in that, but we need a new evangelization. What's a new evangelization? Is it a new gospel? Is it new? No, it's bringing Jesus Christ back to people that once had him mm -hmm. and, and are not remembering him, are not intentional about mm. that, that these Christian nations need to be converted once again, to be renewed in the gospel of Jesus Christ, That's bring right. Jesus back to your country. It's phenomenal. And, and not just your, but the, my, my own heart, right? Yes. I mean, mm. have I met the real Jesus? I remember <laughs> a letter Mother Teresa wrote. Uh, Mother Teresa wrote this to her community of, you know, consecrated women and priests near the end of her life. I'm afraid you don't know the real Jesus. Mm. And I remember mm. reading that, like, wow. She said, not the Jesus from books, but Jesus in your heart. And I really think John Paul is saying that. He says, I want to rekindle Eucharistic amazement. I want you to, again, meet Christ. In fact, I remember that Jubilee year, a wonderful letter that he wrote, mm -hmm. Novo Millennio Iniunte. Yes. And he said, yeah. he said, here's my program for the third millennium, the next 1,000 years. Yeah. Here's my program. And he put it in quotes, contemplate the face yes. of Jesus. Yes, yes. That's it. Cha that that's that's awesome. radically changed me and, and helped me to to come back home and join. I pray a prayer every day, which mm. is called the face prayer. Heavenly Father, I embrace your grace today so that I might not think of another, speak to another, or touch another without first looking for your face in the other. I ask all this through Jesus Christ, oh, God incarnate, God with skin, God made poor, God with a face. You never have the right to look at someone, including yourself, without the mediation work of Jesus Christ, the media and the advocate, and to seek his face. That document that you just mentioned, to kick off the Jubilee, uh, yeah. did so much for me, the theology of the face as well as the theology mm. of the body. Let's unpack more fully yes. before the time goes by. I want you to speak, you know, you speak about that phrase, the way of beauty, and then yeah. also the way oh, of yeah. wonder uh, in relationship to the theology of the body. And so speak to us about that. What does that mean? Unpack that more fully and how we might know that and, and use that, promote that with other people that we're trying to share this theology with. Sure, sure. First off, though, Jim, you have to promise me that you'll email me that face prayer because okay. that was beautiful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> the way of wonder, um, as I like to kind of uh, paraphrase it, is, is the way of beauty. The way of beauty is deeply steeped in theology of the body, John Paul II's vision. The Way of Beauty is also a document from the Vatican that came out in 2006. It's called the Via Pulchritudinis. Uh, Pulchritudinis meaning beauty. Mm -hmm. It's not the most beautiful word, but mm -hmm. that's the Latin there. Mm -hmm. But this Way of Beauty, it's really, it, it's this invitation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually read right from the document because okay. it's gorgeous. Sure. And I, I think, I think our, our culture needs to hear this, our listeners. So this Vatican document says the Way of Beauty is the intimate desire for happiness that resides in the heart of mm. every person. Mm. First off, I'm going to pause there. It's everybody, right? Yes. Like the theology of the body is for everybody. Right. Right. And this intimate desire for happiness, right, it's, it's in me. Maybe somebody's scrolling through channels right now and just fell on this conversation we're having. An intimate desire for happiness, and they're like, whoa, pause. Right. Put down the remote, right? It opens infinite horizons, 
it prompts the human person, right? You and me to push outside ourselves yes. from the, from the routine of the ephemeral passing moment to the transcendent and mystery. And mm -hmm. we seek the final goal of the ultimate quest. That's God himself, creator of all created beauty. I mean, this is life, right, Jim, right, Joy? This is life. Mm -hmm. I awaken, I take breath. I, I'm, I'm an embodied person made in God's image. I'm placed in the midst yeah. of a family, a story, mm -hmm. personally and cosmically unfolding. And my life is a movement, right? My, the philosophers say homo viator. We are persons on a journey. And I can't think of anything more exciting. John Paul II called it, right, Happy Feast Day. He said, every human life is a spiritual adventure. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that means we're on a path. And the way of beauty is that path yes. that calls us up. Yes. That's, that is so very, very true. And one of the things I so appreciated about St. John Paul II, maybe going back to Evangelium Vitae, that was one of the key documents that I read, so involved in the movement, mm -hmm. but to give me a spirituality and, and his teaching. And one of the things he said right at the beginning of that document was that... Uh, don't be afraid to share the gospel of life with other people because mm. while they might not know the phrase, the gospel of life is already written mm. on their hearts. So when you That's speak right. the gospel of life to them, that it will witness to them because it's already there. And that's what I hear you saying about beauty, that beauty is already written upon the heart of every human being. It might be, you know, we're fallen, we're sinful, but it, it's almost like the, const uh, the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that exactly. all men are created equal, endowed by the creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these, life, liberty, happiness. And our founders were mm -hmm. saying, that's already there, it's self-evident. This comes from above, it comes from, from it, it's there. And you're saying, beauty's there. Why don't we solicit it? Why don't we elicit it from the, well, how do we yeah. do that? Start sharing it, show forth the beauty of the Lord. Is that what you're saying? Kind of, it, it's there already. So we yeah. should be confident in sharing. We should, you know, the, the, the challenge here is, we can be tempted to live a horizontal life, a very, it's just a horizontal plane of just Monday through Friday, working for the weekend. What's here on this horizontal plane? Because this is it. But we, we all know that we're made for this transcendent. That's the vertical mm -hmm. piercing in, right? That makes the cross, by the way. Yeah. Every moment of every day, the Lord is piercing this time mm -hmm. and space. That's the incarnation yes. with his beauty with his reality. I mean, St. Francis of Assisi, when he received the stigmata, he cried out, right? Here he is in his horizontal life, receiving this vertical piercing. Mm. And he says, you are beauty, mm. you are beauty. Mm. So beauty doesn't mean just like, you know, wine and roses and everything's fine. Beauty, as Pope Benedict says, pierces us like a dart. Yes. It opens us up, right? When you see something beautiful in your life, creation, uh, you know, it could be a wonderful meal, a glass of wine, uh, a newborn baby, you see something beautiful. The first thing we do is we, oh, uh, we groan, we, oh, we're, we've been pierced. And so what beauty does, the way of beauty does is yeah. suddenly the eternal pierces time, right? Suddenly I'm aware that not just of the ticking of a clock, but there's some other presence here mm -hmm. and it halts me in my tracks. And you know, anytime we've had a beautiful experience, we lose track of time, don't we? Yes. Conversations yes. with right. friends yes. or an experience yes. of a sunrise. We're like, whoa, I'm going to be late for work. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because the eternal has pierced time. Yes. And that's what we need today. And pleasure lies on a certain side of the brain, and it's not the analytical. It, it lies mm -hmm. on the pleasure, pleasure side. Beauty's on mm -hmm. pleasure side, and it doesn't keep time. A kiss with the one you love, you're not keeping time. A good bowl of spaghetti mm. for me and meatballs, I'm not keeping time, right? I just got, <laughs> why? Because it lies on the pleasure, the pleasure side That's of the brain. Right. Other things are more analytical, you, you, you critical thinking, you have to take time. But what you're saying is, wow, it, it gets into the sense of timelessness and it becomes a, you know, a Kairos time where everything is, and it yes. is it's the Holy Eucharist, the love of the Lord that's there, this timelessness and lost in the wonder, right? Wonder, mm -hmm. childlike wonder. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's on the pleasure side of the brain again. Yeah, and you know, Bill, I think for me, it I, I love spending time with my grandchildren, and even when my children were little, because it awakens that inside of you. And Saint mm -hmm. John Paul, he called it the perennial fascination, this way of wonder yes. and beauty, where you you get arrested and you stop and you pause. 
But the problem is as a society and as a culture, we as Catholics have a hard time in walking that out because maybe we're in a screen and we can't look up. Or when we go into mm. church, we're practicing more of a religion than a relationship with the encounter mm. of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So how do we practice that in our Catholic faith? How do we arrest our flesh that we would know a way of beauty, a way of wonder, a way of amazement and, and be childlike again? How do you rekindle that? If you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love this conversation. I wish we had another two hours. <laughs> really, it's it's about giving God his due, right? Render unto God what is God's. Yes. You know, we, we can so nose to the grindstone. We got to be consumers and producers. And we have so much going on and activity. You know, I think practically, where do we begin? Look at the gospel, Martha and Mary, mm. right? Yeah. John Paul II, actually, in that letter, Nova Millennio, he said, Ours is a time of continual movement, which often leads to restlessness. But he said, we have to resist the temptation to do and try first to be. Mm. So that means, how can I put the brakes on? I mean, in the morning, I get up really early, about 530 in the morning. And my first 45 minutes to an hour before the kids wake up, I am resting in the Father's love. Yeah. I'm drinking good dark roast coffee. Yeah. I got my prayer book out. <laughs> I'm looking at maybe the scriptures of the day. I'm not in haste, right? I'm giving to God what is God's. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, right, like listen to bird song. What's the weather yeah. of the day? Step outside for a moment. This affects the quality of your day because you've given unto God what's God's. What's the fruit of wonder? What's the fruit of resting in beauty? Peace, mm. calm, mm. gratitude, right? This Joy. sense of wonder. Yeah, joy, exactly, mm -hmm. joy. And and that is so essential. St. Seraphim once said, maintain a spirit of peace and you will save a thousand souls. Mm -hmm. That that sounds like, well, shouldn't I be doing something, though? If you're peace in the eye of the storm, especially in our culture today, you will be magnetic and people will be drawn to the theology of your body. Because you're saying, I believe in God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I rest in his joy. Right? But, we need this so much today. Yes. Well, let me ask you this. You know what? During the first show, you brought up something about the senses. I don't know if you said restoration of the senses or theology of the mm -hmm. body is connected with the senses and that the senses are good, it's a good thing. And yet we see that the senses can really be manipulated and used for, for evil things. Mm. And so how do we deal with our senses? How do we embrace them properly? And yet we want to censor our senses when they're out of control and get very legalistic or overly yeah, ascetic. With how, question, how do we Jim. deal with that, with our senses properly? It's a great question because as we walk the way of wonder, it, it can often be like a razor's edge, right? God's gifted us with a beautiful world that we can sense, see, smell, taste, touch. Uh, God made all things good in the beginning, right? He said, right. behold, it is very good. He didn't say, behold, it is very tempting or bad or evil. Right. But, you know, what we can do with our inner desire, right? What the popes have called eros, Benedict, Francis, and John Paul II have redeemed this word eros or desire, passion. Okay. We can certainly invert it and make this good thing a god for ourselves. That's idolatry. We know that's bad. That's in our story, right? Right. What we need to do is sacramentalize, or like realize this thing coming to me that pleases my senses is not here for me to grasp and use right? Like the kids stuff, stuffing a firefly yeah. in a glass jar and then killing it. Right. It's here to wash over me as I go further up, further in, into the God who made all things true, good, and beautiful. Mm -hmm. That posture means a Catholic can really freely enjoy the goods of creation in, in that moderation, mm -hmm. right? And that sense of freedom and liberation. And I don't idolatrize things. Yes. I iconize them. I see them for what they are and what they're pointing to. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's work, right? This is the work of virtue right, and right. grace. But we appreciate what God's gifted us with, and that we see everything pointing to him ultimately, Amen. all the good things of life. Bill, we just have about 30 seconds or so. Share with us about your upcoming Congress, the fourth Congress. How's that going to take place? When is it? Oh, yeah. So October 30th to November 1st, just coming up in a few weeks, we have our fourth international Congress. I'll be giving a keynote on the Way of Wonder. We have Dr. Scott Hahn. Dr. Janet Smith, Mikhail Waldstein, Christopher West, George Weigel, wow. some big heavy hitters for our keynotes, and then many other speakers, where we're going to unpack this beautiful teaching of John Paul II and show people it is wide and deep. Mm -hmm. It's a human education, and we need it now more than ever. So tobcongress.com. Great. 
Bill, thank you so much. Can't thank you enough. Wonderful to celebrate this feast day of St. John Paul II. And uh, couldn't think of a better guest to have with us today. God bless you, brother. All the best Thanks to you. Thanks so much. My pleasure. God bless you both. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back where you are at home with Jim and Joy and Father John Paul is here today on the Feast of St. John Paul. We're so excited to have him. Father, what did you think of all the things that Bill was sharing in such as richness? It is rich and today is the memorial of Pope St. John Paul II. Uh, do you believe that we're saying that? Yes, um, I do believe it. <laughs> and Bill yeah. shared with us that he had the privilege of being in his presence 20 years ago uh, today. And I had the privilege of being in his presence at World Youth Day in, I believe it was 2002 at um, Toronto. And um, I think a lot of people would say, um, and I can say this from experience, you know, what is it about this man? You know, why, why, do so, why do so many people like him? Why are so many people uh, attracted to him? Um, and I think back then, uh, as a young person, I know I'm not so young anymore, I'm 44. I guess I'm kind you're of young. still young. It's all relative. <laughs> it's all relative to us, compared you're still to young. God. <laughs> compared to God, right? We're all young. Um, but for, I think we knew that he loved us. Uh, just mm -hmm. being in his presence and being in the midst of uh, a million people um, in that field, um, there was this sense of him preaching the word of God that he was talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, right. I was in a seminary at that time, uh, my second year of seminary, and um, he was talking about, um, you know, he was addressing some tough issues. He was talking about the scandals in the church. Um, and he said to young men, he said, young men and uh, th you, those of you who are thinking about the priesthood of religious life, do not be afraid mm. to follow Christ along the royal road of the cross. And those words are like mm -hmm. right. pounded mm -hmm. in me. And it was like everybody in that field disappeared. And I was right there in front of mm -hmm. him. Wow. Um, so he had that ability, that charism, and you knew that he loved you, you know, just being, being there. Um, and I have talked to a lot of people about that, that have been in his presence before, and they've got that same sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what a gift. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a gift to be there in his presence. Yeah. Well, I can remember when we saw him in Rome and, and we had an audience with him and it was just so exciting. And well, I was Protestant. Mm -hmm. I knew mm -hmm. that this man loved God. Yeah. And I just wanted to see him. I just wanted to see somebody that loved and served God with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. It was just like, this is amazing, you know? And I came back and there was a conversion story. I mean, I became Catholic. Yeah, yeah he, had, he had such an ability to, to communicate uh, the faith, but just to be a witness. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, George Weigel calls him the witness to hope. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and we need hope in our world today, even though he has passed on uh, yeah. to the Father's house now. Yes. His teachings live on. That's right. Uh, his body, his corpus of teachings live on, and we can't forget about that. There's a, there's a whole generation now that don't really know him mm -hmm. right. and are not being fed by him uh, and his teachings. And we need to, we have a grave responsibility, I think, right. uh, as clergy, as lay people, to pass that on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well said, Father. Mm -hmm. Close us in a prayer and with a blessing, please. Through the intercession of Saint John, Pope St. John Paul II, family, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit Amen. descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. What a blessed, edifying time for us to be together in this way. And with all that's said about the theology of the body, often I just think the theology of the body is explained simply by making the sign of the cross, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on my body. 
And that's, that's the simplest way. My body, under the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is doing theology in me and through me. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.